Das Fedonia. Uh, anyway. See, oh, I gotta flip the screen around here. Okay, here we go. So, the important thing about this is to be able to do a major scale. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm doing it starting on the third fret of the, of the lowest string. Third fret of the lowest string, which is a G. Notice how you play a G chord like that? It's, it's really, that's the root of that chord and it's the root of that scale. And this is the scale that goes along with that chord. And it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, the way you play it, the fingering doesn't matter if you're first learning this, but after you get good at this, see how I'm, I've got my fingers, each finger is on a fret. I know that's hard to do if you're not used to that, but start getting used to it. Because even though it's a, it can be a, a lot of the things you learn can be a real pain to learn. They will benefit you in a big, big way. And another thing, this wasn't supposed to be about hand technique, it's more about theory, but since we're, since we're doing this, I'm gonna show you something else. Like, don't let your finger lift off the neck of the guitar. Like, when I play this note with my pinky finger, see how this stays down there? It's not pressing down, but it's not flying up in the air either. If it flies up in the air, it's just, think of it this way, it's an economy of motion thing. If your hand flies up in the air, you're just gonna have to put it back down again. So especially, like I'm personally not into speed playing, but if you like to play fast, you gotta be able to have an economy of motion where you know, you're not moving your hand very much. And one of the coolest, all right, bye-bye. One of the coolest, uh, exercises to do is take the third, the fourth, and the fifth note of that scale. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna go three, four, five. It sounds like that part of the song Frere Jacques that goes Dormez-vous, Dormez-vous. So it goes three, four, five. Notice I'm hitting each note and letting it ring for a little while. A lot of my students, they'll hit a note and they'll go, and then they'll, they'll their thing is like, what is it, a hot potato or something? No, hit the damn note and let it ring. I mean, this is what you, this is what you sound like, right? This is the, play it the way you want to sound. Like, dig into that note. Notice I'm playing right beneath the fret also. This is too far back. Right here is about right where you want to be. If you put your finger right behind the fret, you're pressing that fret kind of in that little space, and you can might even feel it's a little springy right there. Uh, it kind of gives like a like if you're pressing against a trampoline or a rubber band or something. And if you grab that spot, I mean, we're, this is a super a super subtle thing. But once you feel what I'm talking about, you'll know what I mean. And it's essential. So that's how you get that real strong attack, is to hit that note and really commit yourself to it. But, okay, that's all about left-hand technique and expression, but I wanna to go to the theory side of it right now, because that's why we're doing this in the first place. Look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You gotta know that so well. That if somebody walk, walk, woke you up at three o'clock in the morning and say, handed you a guitar and said, play a major scale, you could just do it without having to review it. If you have to review it, you're not ready to go to the next step. 
A lot of people think they're ready, and they are not. They just aren't. And I don't say that to be a prick or anything. I just say that because it's true. After teaching people for years and years, because uh, here's, well, I'll show you the practicality of where we're going. I want to be able to call out certain numbers and have you just play those numbers. Like, what if I say, take the one, three, and the five? Well, you can figure it out. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So one, three, five would be one, three, five. Okay? And that sound might remind you of something. What? I'm not sure, but that sound is used in music a lot. What if we add to that the six? Notice that three and six are right next to each other. Notice also when I play this, I'm... much I'm not like doing this my hand isn't all over the place uh, it took a while to get used to that but it's worth it and I'm gonna play those when I say I'm gonna play those those quarter notes what that means is to go one two three four one two three four and one so the counting of one through four is the rhythm but the, the description of the notes I'm playing is one, three, five, six. Okay, so you're gonna do it four times starting on G, and then check us out. Count up to the four, go one, two, three, four. So where is four? Can you see what I mean when I say four is right next to one? One, two, three, four. So there's one and there's four. Um, anyway, so go to four, pretend that was one, and play one, three, five, six from there. Go back to the original one. Now go to five, four. And if you look at the bottom of that, uh, that flyer, or that, uh, that sheet, it shows you a 12-bar blues progression. And 12-bar 12, 12 blues progression is a very specific thing. It doesn't just mean playing any blues song. No, that's not what it means at all. It's specifically a progression that has four, I'm sorry, that has 12 bars, and each bar normally is gonna be a count of four. So like you could go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. switches to the next chord. That's the C. Now it's back on the G. One time on D. Once on C. Once on G. I mean twice on G, sorry. And then it starts over again. Top. Top is a slang expression used like when they say take it from the top that means start from the beginning so when we say top in music um, it means we finished the chord progression we start and we're running back to the top and we're gonna start over again and start playing the whole thing one more time starting from the top and you might notice another thing when I say top it's not kind of sort of in the in close to the spot it's exactly on the beat where top starts so if I'm on the five chord four chord two more bars two three four one two three four top it's a very specific thing so let's let's use that chord progression uh, of one four five if you look at the right hand diagram on, uh, let's see, the one, two, three, the fifth diagram across, it's circle in red, it shows you the location of one, four, five. And when we show you uh, notes that are the first note of a chord progression, we always do that in Roman numerals. And when we use, uh, when I describe what pattern to play, such as one, three, five, six, we're gonna use Arabic numerals. Some of this may not make sense until you hear me say it a few times. 
But anyway, so here's here's here here we go here. So I'm gonna play one three five six. One three five six. One three five six. Here's a third time. Here's a fourth time. Now we're going to the four. And do it twice. Now back to the one. Once on the five. Once on the four. And back on the one. sitting right in front of each other, I would ask you to demonstrate that to me. And since I can't do that here, um, I just, it's, it's important for me to know that what I'm saying lands and it makes sense for you because sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. I can think it's simple, but somebody else can be very confused by using numbers to describe everything. But really, that's what music theory is doing. If here's your scale, I'm going to review everything I said in maybe 60 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm in the key of G. I'm playing a major scale in the key of G. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to use those numbers for two different things. One, to describe the positions that I want you to go to. There's the one. There's the four, and there are the five. On a guitar, one, four, five. If you played each one with a bar chord, a good reference would be a song such as Louie Louie. One, four, five. Or La Bamba, one, four. I'm not exaggerating when I say hundreds of songs are written using a uh, a one four five chord progression such as that. So anyway, we're using numbers to define what chords we're at, and that's if you're looking on that diagram, that's the part that's circled in red that shows a Roman numeral one, four, and five. Uh, now the pattern we're going to plug in is one, three, five, six. Check this out. Here's the scale. Play up the scale and pick out the one, three, five, and six. So there's one, two, okay, there's the three, four, five, okay, there's the five. So, so far we got one, three, five, and then six is right next to three. So if I hit each one, three, five, six, one, three, five, six, not only is this the easy way to learn, this is the legitimate way to learn. This is what music theory is, okay? I did not invent this. This is just this is just the way it's done. And the reason we use numbers instead of saying the names of the notes is because everything I'm saying works in a different position on the guitar for a different key, okay? And we're not gonna go there quite yet, but I wanna finish this. So if I play one, three, five, six, tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit each note twice just to give it a little little groove, okay? And give it a shuffle rhythm. One, two. Right now I'm counting how many bars I've played. Here comes the four chord. Get ready with your first or your second finger to just uh, always nail that first note. Here's a five, five, four. Always think ahead to where you're going. Even when you have this thing memorized cold, always think ahead.
comes the four. Watch. Can you hear the sound? Back to one. Five. Four. Now you might think that this is a guitar lesson, but you're also learning how to play bass at the same time. Because when you play bass, probably the most important thing you do is to stay on the one. But if you want to add other notes, you got you to gotta know what the notes in the scale are. The scale might be major, it might be minor. We haven't even gone there yet. But m making sure that you really understand the major scale is what's going to make teaching the minor scale super easy later on. If you don't have the basic concept of the major scale, you know, I tell you what, I have students that get this right away and they just sail with it. And I have other students that are just as smart and they don't get it. And every time we do a lesson, I have to review this stuff. It's because, you know, uh, they don't really sit down and memorize it. So you really need to really know this inside and out. You can, uh, anyway, you, I'm gonna change patterns now. Check this out. Count up the scale to, uh, and say the numbers out loud. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So notice which note is the seven. It's a half step below the eight. See? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? So anyway, here's the seven. Flat that note, so now we're gonna call it flat seven. And notice when you flat the seven, it's directly across from one. One. So keep that in your recognition of what that shape looks like. One, eight, flat seven, five. And when you start doing that, It'll probably remind you of something you've heard because it's been done over and over and over again. One, two. I'm going to play each note twice and give it a shuffle rhythm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. I'm going to change to the four chord. start the pattern from the five. Five, four. Notice how the pattern always moves and this fingering is exactly the same. That's one advantage that you have on a guitar over a lot of other instruments, such as a horn or a piano, they have their own specific way the notes are set up. A guitar is tuned symmetrically across in fourths until you get to that second string. But we're leaving that second string out for the time being. So when you learn a pattern, one, eight, flat seven, five, if it starts on the lowest string, that pattern is gonna look the same if you play it starting on the fifth string.
singing a melody that works over a 12 bar blur blues. It's an old Jimmy Forrest thing called Night Train. I put a lot of emphasis on playing really simple, but making it really lock into a groove. Playing a groove is probably more important than whether you play the notes right, but you got to play the notes right too. But what I'm saying is if your groove is, is, is great, and you make a little mistake, it's all right. Because that groove is what keeps you going. So, um, in, to recap all of that, we're using numbers for two different things. The numbers are the numbers of Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do of the major scale. But we're going to think about it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we use the numbers to describe the pattern that we're playing. And we used pattern one, three, five, six. And then I switched to a pattern that was one, eight, flat seven, five. Now we're also using numbers for something else to show you the three different positions that you're gonna play those patterns in. Okay, so you could play the pattern starting on the one, starting on the four, or starting on the five. So, um, this is not as effective as a as a person-to-person -person private lesson because I would want to make sure that you understand it, and I can't really get that since this is a video lesson unless you played it back for me, but. I'm willing to, uh, what, what questions do you have? Are there any questions that you have that relate to what we're talking about? You're speechless. I know. I hear you, Gypsy. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, no, it takes a while to digest it. And if you hear the same information a few times, it might take a little while to sink in. I notice when I'm learning something, like my brain will just get like uh, in this resistant position of like, I don't get it, I don't get it, I don't get it, and then I'll get pissed off, <laughs> and then I can't receive any new information, and it's like, uh, but when you come back, you hear it again, hear it again, hear it again, I'm Hello, Ukraine. Uh, we send our best wishes out to you. Um, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, <laughs> I wish I had something profound to say, but I don't. Uh, but uh, my heart is, is with what you all are going through. Um, so. Anyway, back to this. In some kinds of music, it's cool to, to play stroke up and down. And in other kind of music, it's better to keep it at all down strokes. So you'll find that amongst uh, people that teach and people that play, a lot of, uh, there's, there's no agreement. There's plenty of there's plenty of argument about whether you should uh, do downstrokes or upstrokes combination. Uh, what I wouldn't do is do upstrokes like you want. 
don't know if you can tell, but I'm upstroking everything. You don't want to do that. But see how everything is a downstroke? And uh, I had a, uh, oh God, about 30 years ago, I had a, uh, a young lady who was, uh, came to the lesson and she was a bass player. And um, she, she was like in a punk band and she had like the jacket and the studs and the whole, the whole deal going, right? And so um, when I started teaching her about uh, upstrokes, she started saying, oh, we have a rule in our band, no upstrokes. Everything has to be a downstroke. And like, even though that seems kind of rigid, it totally makes sense because if you're playing punk music, the, see, the thing is... So you can get more speed if, with the combination of down and up strokes, but see, all down strokes makes it sound a lot stronger. Uh, yeah, I can play some Howl Wolf when we, uh, we're doing a lesson right now, so I'm not gonna interrupt the lesson to uh, take any requests right now. I'm taking questions, actually. So anyway, so notice when I'm, say if I'm just playing the root and the fifth on the open E string, like that. See how strong that sounds? So if you're playing certain kinds of rock, you probably want to use all down strokes. Now, if you're a guitar player playing a lead, it's going to be different because to get the speed you want, you might need to do a combination of down and up strokes. Okay, so... I've never really concentrated on playing fast, but if you do, uh, you want to do get a get a down up 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 down up, and probably a good coordination exercise. If this is brand new to you, is um, to uh, play the major scale. In fact, there was this other teacher that used to teach where I used to teach, and his name was George. And he was a really good guitar player, too. And he was insistent upon, when you play, that it was always a downstroke on the downbeat, always an upstroke on the upbeat, and you did not interrupt that. And I think, even though I don't agree totally, the wisdom behind what he's saying is this, is that if you do that for a long time, you get used to a certain regimented pattern that works. Uh, there are certain so so if I were if I were him telling you to practice, I would say, for like if you play the major scale, one, two, three, four, five. Take the three, four, five. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. I'm going one. I'm sorry. I'm going three. Four, five, four. One, four, I'm sorry. Three, four, five, four, three. And if I do eighth notes on my uh, picking hand. Notice it's in a strict pattern. Of down, up, down, up, down. Then you can take other combinations of notes like one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, two. On my left hand, I'm just playing one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, and then starting over again on one. And as I'm doing that, notice I'm strictly sticking to down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So I'm not saying you have to play that way, but one of the interesting things about this is that 
whatever you practice is going to help you, you know? I mean, yeah, there is such a thing as practicing things wrong, but especially on a thing like what we're talking about now, like which direction you pick, um, <clears throat> different guitar teachers have their own theory about how you should do it. Well, pick out what's right for you and just practice that. Or sometimes it's cool to practice the way the guy that you don't agree with says to practice because you might wind up learning something that you wouldn't have thought of uh, otherwise. So... I spent the first 20 years of my musical career playing um, bass in rock bands. And one of the things I learned from that, well, a lot, I learned a lot of things from that. Uh, one of them is that if you don't keep a good groove, you're gonna get kicked out of the band. Happened to me twice. And um, that is probably the best lesson you can get. And don't be screwing around trying to show off playing a bunch of bullshit. Like just lock on. <laughs> like that if you play solid like that you will be in very high demand as a bass player a lot of people will want you to play in their band if you can just play solid and not not be distracted by playing bunches of notes thing is if you play solid and then you play a lot of notes you're going to sound good but if you start out playing a lot of notes and don't develop how solid you are you know they're going to be going next <laughs> what is that string in the head stick for? Uh, oh, you mean this thing right here? That is just so I can hang the guitar on a nail. See, I put that string on there so I can hang the guitar. See how that guitar is hanging up behind me on the wall? You can't see it, but... You know, they make little things for um, hanging guitars that are like leather things that fit over, but I, I just have a string on there so I can uh, hang that over a nail and let the guitar sit there. So, uh, anyway, well, that's about it for that part, unless you have other questions, because I'm going to... I've been... Um, trying to create a piece of music uh, for a project and it got to the point where I worked on it and then I was going, yeah, next. <laughs> um, and then I, you know, I, you know, I know this happens to you is that you play it for a long time trying to get it good and then you listen back to it and you go, oh man, I don't know. And then you, you come back the next day and work on it some more and then you work on it some more, and the next thing you know, like you don't like it anymore, and you lose your energy, and it's like, God, get this stupid song out of here. I don't even want to hear it again, because you just get too deep into it, and so overly critical. And one of the things I was critical about is I realized as I was recording it, like when I'm just sitting here playing, it was a thing like that, when I sit here and play that for you, it sounds okay, but you know what, when you actually record it and you listen back to it, like, it sounds really sloppy. And this is something that I'm submitting for use in a film, so it can't be sloppy. from the fact that it was just like it was like that you know that energy and it's funny that that's what we want in music a lot of times is that energy that's what the passion that excitement which makes it so interesting and and just fun you know and at the same time uh when you record it it sounds kind of like all over the place and then you refine it and all of a sudden the refined version doesn't sound as cool. So 
I don't know, I got stuck. I had to just break away from that song for a while, and I might come back to it today. On the wall, or is it better to keep them in cases? Um, I don't know. What you don't, here's what I can say for sure. If you hang a guitar on the wall or have it in your house, don't put it someplace where the sun beats on it. Because when the sun comes in the window and beats on a guitar day after day for a couple of years, the wood is going to change its shape. It's going to give, you know, think about this for a second. This, this guitar is strung up with these strings and there's easily over a hundred pounds of pressure. It might be a lot more than that, you know, that's being supported by this, this kind of intricate thing that's been made out of wood. And the thing is, when you let it sit in the sun for a long time, it gets hot and cold, hot and cold. The neck is going to bend um, on an acoustic guitar. Let me show you something about this. 